Sir Isaac Newton told us why an apple falls down from the sky. And from this, it's very plain. All of our objects do the same. My name's Margaret Wynne and my job at Wolfsport Manor is Conservation Manager which means I actually look after the house and the grounds um, plus the collection of furniture which is in the manor. Isaac Newton was um, famous for being one of our first scientists. He was actually a natural philosopher. There was no such thing as a scientist in the 17th century. But I actually think of Isaac Newton as the little boy that was born here at Woolsthorpe Manor. Isaac Newton has been considered by many to be the greatest and most influential scientist who ever lived. His publication Principia Mathematica lays the foundation for most classical mechanics. Newton described universal gravitation and the three laws of motion and Principia was later revised in the early 20th century and this led uh, to the modern theories of relativity proposed by uh, Einstein and to quantum theory which is basically physics at high speed and physics of very small dimensions, respectively. However, whilst Newton appeared to be a solitary academic, there are now thoughts surrounding his personal life, discussing his relationship with religion and its impact on his work. I'm uh, the rector of five parishes, uh, Skillington, Great Ponton, uh, Little Ponton, uh, Stoke Rochford and here at Colsterworth. But this is a... Uh, a church which you will be familiar with because this is one where Isaac Newton was baptised. Yeah, I mean he was very religious but in order to get his seat at Cambridge he had to be ordained and he refused because he couldn't uh, agree with some of the basic Christian ideas of the Trinity, you know, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Uh, so he refused to be ordained and uh, they let him off. Uh, so he got away with this. Uh, but he remained religious all his life and he wrote far more religious works than he did scientific works. Um, some people have suggested that Newton was actually more a man of science or a man of religion. Um, actually Isaac Newton was very uh, religious or, and he was both a man of science and a man of religion. Obviously his writings pioneered uh, in the field of physics and the natural philosophies but he was extremely religious himself. Um, just more of an unorthodox Christian, if anything. He warned people against using universal gravitation and the laws of motion to view and to compare the universe as a mere machine and if akin to a great clock. And obviously he was concerned about uh, religious, uh, his religious views clashing with his mathematical views. Um, he said that gravity explains the motions of the planets but cannot explain who set the planets in motion. God governs all things and knows all that is or can be done. But did his seemingly innocent views reach beyond the grasp of blind belief? Or was Isaac a madman, a skeptic, a heretic? Yes, I think Newton did believe he was a messenger from God. He believed God had given him a divine um, job to do, um, to unlock the secrets of the universe. And he, um, he even thought um, God wanted him to find the se a secret code in the Bible and unlock that as well. well I, th I think he was very much a man of his time. Uh, you know, people in those days were religious, uh, you know, even the scientists. People who departed from that were, 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 were somewhat looked down upon. It's very different from now, you know, kind of post-enlightenment where people see, uh, you know, religion as maybe uh, more at odds with science. And he believed there were all sorts of hidden codes in the bi Bible. Uh, later on in life, after he'd done his work, his, uh, uh, his uh, uh, philosophy of mathematics, uh, in which he talked about his, 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 you know, his different theories of motion and everything and, and gravity. Uh, later on, he, uh, 
he decided that he would get quite into uh, trying to turn base metals into gold and things like that because he thought there was a kind of secret, uh, you know, kind of religious, uh, you know, godness, if you like, about the universe and about science, the way everything worked. Albert Einstein uh, made a statement. He said, "God doesn't play. Uh, God doesn't play dice. Play dice." Uh, and Newton was very much of the same milk. Uh, Isaac uh, Einstein was a Jew, uh, but Newton believed that uh, you know all the order in the universe came from God, and it was all part of God's design, and that was evidence for for, for God's existence. So I think it was unusual that uh, science and religion were put together. As I say, science was a new discipline coming along. We, we hadn't had scientists. Um, it does appear that uh, science and religion are, are in opposite, you know, op opposite spectrums, but um, people manage it today, so there's no reason why Newton couldn't. Because obviously today it's fine for me to say I'm a Christian, and I, and I'm a, but I'm a scientist, and I mean, I think that with the complexity of what we see, you know, every time I see something more complex, it convinces me of the uh, existence of God. You know, that, that's that's what I feel. Um, but um, for for him at his time, it was perhaps unusual to marry science and re religion together. When Newton attended Cambridge University um, as a sizar, it was necessary to become um, uh, ordained before being allocated a seat. Therefore, suggesting uh, to not be religious, i.e. you weren't religious, or you had unusual and unorthodox religious views, was uh, certainly very much out of the ordinary. Right, I mean, you know, heresy was really those people who didn't believe word for word what the Bible says or what they understood the Bible to say, uh, you know, Christian doc uh, dogma. Uh, Isaac Newton certainly departed from that, so in that sense I, was, I suppose he was a heretic. Uh, he was also a bit weird, I think, and probably a bit uh, Asperger's. Uh, uh, he uh, struggled uh, to communicate with people, didn't have many friends and, and things like that. So he had some outlandish views, and I, I think that, that probably reflected in a, a, a lot of his opinions of what was going on. Uh, but heresy, uh, you know, we have a different view of heresy now than we did then. People are allowed to be a bit more creative with their thinking and uh, allowed to, you know, think out of the box, really. I don't think he was. Uh, he had heretical views. Um, he was just different. Newton didn't believe in the Trinity, that's why people think that he had heretical views on religion. Um, but knowing Newton, he didn't believe in anything that he couldn't prove. He, he wanted to prove everything, even as a child, if he came across something, he made a working model of it and wanted to prove how it worked. So that is why he couldn't accept the Trinity, because he couldn't actually prove it. It didn't mean that he wasn't religious. He was, he was deeply religious, actually, but he was just different from the mainstream of the 17th century. Newton's work has um, an effect on our modern life today, um, because lots of his um, theories and his works we're obviously using in everyday life. I mean, space travel being a, an obvious uh, one. People have called Isaac Newton a heretic, um, and it's not a word we tend to use these days very much, but certainly in the time he was an, orth an unorthodox Christian, um, a definite anti-Trinitarian i.e. he didn't believe in the conventional Christian view of Father, Son and Holy Spirit, the, the Trinity. Um, he also possibly had uh, what are called Arian views um, and he, 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 he was worried about the concept uh, of Christ being the Son of God um, and that he uh, may, may have always existed uh, but, but may have been created and therefore distinct from God. Um, he also appeared to have Socinian views, which is a Christian theology which deals with salvation and redemption, i.e. Jesus Christ as uh, saviour and salvation as a, as a free gift, i.e. something that you can't possibly earn. Um, his faith really wasn't public knowledge and he kept it to himself, I'm sure, because um, at the time it wouldn't have been very uh, 
uh, it wouldn't have gone along very well with uh, his uh, authorities at the university and he may even have been persecuted if some of his views had been known at the time and he would have certainly very much risked losing his scientific credibility with his peers. Newton's true beliefs died with him as many of his papers further discussing them were never published. Despite controversy and possible criticism, however, it is undeniable Newton left his fingerprint on this world. Oh, definitely, Newton was revolutionary for his time, yes. Um, revolutionary in the fact that uh, the amount of thinking he did, and uh, mainly he sort of worked things out on his own. He, you know, he. He was a, a solitary, silent lad that uh, kind of had all these wonderful ideas going on. Mm -hmm.